Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Friday Live q and I'm laughing because uh, I'm sorry I'm a, little, I'm a little late today. I think I'm always a little late. But today, my dog, um, I was just, I've been putting a proposal together um, for a company that wants me to, to do some training with their staff. And um, I was trying to get this done before I went live. And I looked over and I have to show you a photo. Oh, dear. I looked over and um, <laughs> this is my dog at the moment, right? This is, I looked over, this is, I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> I looked outside and this is what I was met with. My dog completely black, covered in mud. So I've just been trying to deal with that because I can't let him inside. Well, <laughs> he's, he's meant to be a cream and white colored dog. Um, he's a puppy and he's just very dug a massive hole because it's raining and wet here and I couldn't leave him outside in, in and I couldn't leave him inside. So um, I've just quickly um, washed the dog and tried to do whatever I could. <laughs> the, the dog, oh, as I said to him, I said, Arlo, his name is Arlo, sometimes you make it really hard to love you. I'm just saying. Um, okay, so that's what I was just doing before I, I jumped on this live. You know, when you look at something and you just can't quite believe what you're looking at? Yeah, my dog could not be any muddier, dirtier. It's just unbelievable. So anyway, um, I digress. Welcome to today's live Q&A. It's Fiona Lukies here. Um, if you've just joined in, please, you know, feel free to say hi. And, uh, you know, post a comment below and let me know that you are out there, that there are people actually listening to this. Um, I'm not just talking to myself, so I always love to hear from people. And, um, yep, I've got a couple of questions that I will answer for you. And as always, if you have a question that you would like me to answer for you, please comment in the uh, – please post it in the comments below. Um, it's very wet, 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 wet here in Melbourne. Winter is definitely oh, – well, it feels very winter. We were not even in winter yet. So wherever you are, I hope the, the sun is shining for you, if it's spring, summer in – which I know it is in Canada and the US. And uh, for everybody else, welcome to today's live. If you're new to my work or, um, or, or you know, what I actually talk about, these are a Q&A that I do every Friday and I just show up here to answer any questions that you may have um, around relationships, around life, anywhere that you may get stuck. Maybe you've read my ebook and you've got some questions around that or you've listened to my podcast or, you know, maybe you've got a relationship issue and you're just not quite sure where to go. You know, there's nothing worse than feeling stuck in life. It can feel like you're in that place of limbo and nothing ever changes and you're just kind of treading water. And I have a lot of people who come to me feeling like they're treading water. So if that is you, I want you to know that you're not alone. It's very, very, very common. And I um, mean, it's very, very disempowering. And, you know, I just want you to know no matter what you're dealing with in life, there is a way to move through through that where you feel more empowered, where uh, you actually um, feel like you have more choice and where you actually feel like you can actually breathe. Sometimes when we're, when we're treading water and we're in survival mode, it can feel like we're just holding on for dear life, right? And then that feeling of actually being able to breathe, let things go, um, feeling like you've got choice, feeling like there's a sense of, of hope and possibility and potential. This is very, very important for our own sense of well-being, our ability to connect, our ability to function on, on every level, okay? So if you are feeling that way, I want you to know you are not alone. A lot of people reach out to me feeling that way a lot, okay? Via Facebook Messenger, email, um, by you know social media etc so um i really want you to know you are not alone it's very very common and you do not have to live that way all right to me there is nothing worse than feeling so stuck that no matter what you do it looks like there are no options it looks like no matter what you do there's nowhere for you to go all right and um that is a really debilitating way to live life and i just want you to know there is more on offer than that so if you are stuck Listen up um, because the understanding that I teach is the most incredible way for you to lighten your mental load and to actually feel unstuck. And that is such a liberating thing, no matter what you're dealing with out here. Okay. Um, hey, Carolyn. Yes, I bet it's drizzly and cold in Gisborne. Um, yep. New Zealand and Australia, we are on a similar trajectory here. Cold. It's, 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 
autumn or fall for you guys who are in the States and Canada, but winter is coming and yeah, it's it's pretty cold and drizzly. Um, hey, Rose, welcome. Um, it's sunny in California. Awesome. Okay, you've skipped spring and straight into summer. Yeah, I think a lot of you guys tend to skip spring when I hear so many of you are having, you know, massive dumps of snow and um and and it's still spring i just find that mind-boggling as an aussie i just can't get my head around it um anyone else who wants to tune in and say hi please do so all right so i have a question here that i'm going to start off with today because i think it's um really important um because i think this is and this is a slightly different question but i i think um this is this is actually quite important um so Hi, Fiona. I'm having a big challenge with my four and a half year old boy. Before his sister came along, we did everything together and life was great. He was super sweet and we were both happy. A year and a half ago, nine days after his third birthday, his sister stole the show and he has suffered with jealousy. She took mum away and took his milk away, etc. He hassles her most of the time, which is a constant frustration to me. But when he has feelings, he can torment her. Whatever she has in her hand, he wants to snatch away. He grits his teeth and growls at her. I ask him to stop or leave her alone calmly three times, and he won't listen until I shout. The the um, this this really triggers me. Sometimes I physically move him. Due to me not treating him kindly, his behaviour is worsening, and the loop feeds back. I'm super stressed. Instinctively, I feel I have to protect my girl, and emotionally, I'm resenting my boy. But I also feel guilty because I understand he's lost. He needs my love and connection. Please, if you can help me in any way I'll be grateful awesome you know um when I say awesome I don't mean awesome um for your situation I mean this is a really great question I can relate to that I went through the same thing when my um, second child was born I would have to keep I would have to take the second child with me everywhere so having a shower he would have to go in the, the his rocker and um so I could keep an eye on him because if I turn my back my eldest child would kind of let him know he wasn't too happy to have him around um so a really important thing that I want to stay here is you need to help your son be able to verbalize his emotions, right? So, so when you tell him don't do that, that doesn't give him the tools to actually process how he's feeling. And so one of the reasons he's growling, gritting his teeth and snatching things away is he doesn't have the skills, he doesn't have the the the, the language to verbalize how he's feeling to so to express how he's feeling and so when we can't express how we feel and this is true for human beings in general and this is why I thought this is actually a great question because you know I meet lots of um, adults who don't know how to express how they feel and so then they they show it in dis they deal with their emotions in dysfunctional ways and I'm not saying your son's dealing with things in a dysfunctional way as a four and a, as a you know four and a half year old boy but what you need to do rather than telling him don't do that, is you need to actually get to his level and talk to him about how he is feeling and help him express his feelings because it's no different in a child than how it is in an adult. When we feel heard and understood, we feel connected. And when we feel connected, we feel calmer and we actually feel loved, right? Human beings, connection is at the heart and soul of everything we do as human beings. So what you want to do is help this little boy get the language he needs to verbalise how he is feeling. So, and like I just said, when you say don't do that, and I, and I appreciate why you're doing it, it doesn't give him that ability to express how he feels. So, you know, in the moment that he's angry and upset, you know, and I know if you're if you're breastfeeding or you're doing whatever, that might not be um, easy for you to do. But you know, take a moment to sit down with him, get on his level, and say, and ask him, how are you feeling? Are you do you feel sad that mummy has um, another baby in the house? Do you feel that mummy like? Do you know what I mean? Like, ask him, and then say, you know, how does that make you feel? And if he doesn't have the words, that's when you can sort of say to him, do you feel sad? Do you feel angry? Do you feel right? And then when he expresses that, say, look, would you, you know, um, let's find some ways in which you can express that where you're not hurting your sister and where mummy isn't getting cross. And so talk him through ways in which he can express his emotions when he's feeling hurt and sad and give him the language and tools to do that. If you do that, that will help enormously 
with his desire to want to hit his sister or, or you know, the growling, the gritting of the teeth because he's just doing the best he can with all these overwhelming emotions and he doesn't know what to do with them. And, you know, and at four and a half, he's producing testosterone. So he's getting surges of testosterone. There's a lot going on for him. So you want to just do whatever you can to help him language his emotions, language um, his frustrations and his anger and tell him it's okay to be angry, it's okay to feel cross, that mummy feels that way too, that, you know, adults feel that way, daddy, whoever, and is in his life. But, you know, what, what we've got to do is find a way to express that in a way that doesn't create harm and hurt to anybody else because I'm sure he feels bad when he hurts his sister and then he doesn't know what to do with that feeling either or when you get cross with him. And so you want to take the time to find that out for him. So really help him find that language. Do you feel sad? How do you feel when mummy's holding your sister? You know, what, you know, when you're when you're growling and angry and you want to snatch things away, is that because you're feeling, you know, and, and see if you can help him develop that language. That's the most important thing. And make sure you are on his level when you're having that conversation. So you're not kind of towering over him, you're crouched down and you're at his eye level so that he can really see that he matters and that you're listening and that you're very present. And I would try and do that conversation where you put his sister down and, um, you know, maybe it's when she's been fed or she's happily playing with something, I don't know how old she is, but you can actually really give him your presence and then help him find ways to language how he is feeling. You know, I talk about this a lot with my clients and relatable students, and it's no different with your little boy, right? And that is one of the most important skills we can learn is how to speak to somebody else's reality, okay? How we can speak to somebody else's reality. Now, if you don't find the, if you don't, uh, if you're not curious enough to do that, if you don't, if you don't take the time to learn how to do that, this is when you will have a misfire with everybody, right, or a misfire with that person. And it doesn't matter if they're a toddler or a teenager or an, or an adult. You will It will feel like you're misfiring. You're trying to ex speak and express yourself and it's just not landing. And so this, this capacity, this ability to speak to somebody else's reality because everybody lives in completely separate realities. No two people see the world the same way ever about anything. We don't experience things the same way, even if we're looking at the same thing in the exact same situation. This is a really tricky thing for people to get their head around. And often the mistake we make is we approach somebody else's reality with ours because we think our reality is so clear, so obvious that it's all there is. And it is not. You've got to understand your reality is one of billions. And that because no two people see the world the same way, no two people experience the world the same way, no two people have the same thought patterns about things, if you don't take the time to explore somebody else's reality, you will continuously misfire in your communication. And it is exactly the same with a small child as it is with anyone of any age. We have got to take the time to be curious. When we assume, right, and I'm not saying that this is what this lady is doing, but when we assume that this, that, I mean, I'm just going to use this example. If you assume that your son's just being naughty, if you assume that he's doing this because, um, you know, he's just being naughty and difficult, again, I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I'm just trying to give you an example. You will approach, you will not be curious enough to understand his reality, right, because you're going to be frustrated and um, reactionary and judgmental and take the behaviour really personally. And so, you know, when we do this with anybody, we limit what is possible in, in, a, in a conversation, in any form of discussion. So when you actually take the time to be curious, to explore someone else's reality, it is amazing what can happen. I've had clients come to me who've been in relate long-term relationships and uh, have discovered something about the other person that they didn't even know, um, that, that they didn't even know about that other person. Does that make sense? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't say that very well. They've discovered something they didn't even um, understand or know that another person felt or 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 thought about a, a, spe a specific thing. So, you know, people will come to me and say, I know everything there is to know about my partner or about my child or about this person or, my, or a sibling or a family member. I've known them all my life. But what you don't realise is that you start, when you get to that point, you start operating out of assumptions. And the minute you stop operating out of assumptions, start operating out of assumptions, 
you uh, you stop being curious, you become judgmental, you are actually literally having a conversation with yourself because you are you're dealing with your own reality rather than somebody else's. So understanding this is very important. I teach this um, quite at a, at, a, at a far deeper level in my relatable program and, and with my private clients so that what happens is people are actually able to show up to one another from a different space with, a, with more bandwidth, with fresh thinking and um, an ability to look at, look, and, look at and experience each other with fresh eyes. Now, if you want to create any form of change in your relationship, you need that. You need fresh thinking. You need that capacity to look at each other with fresh eyes. And it is entirely possible. I promise you it is. Even if being in that relationship with that person for a very, very, very long time, fresh eyes is uh, fundamentally important and, and absolutely possible. Um, and, you know, fresh thinking and fresh eyes go hand in hand, right? So when you understand where to look in the direction for that and how that works, you can bring that to your relationships. And then we create fresh feelings, fresh connections, fresh, poss fresh possibilities. We actually discover things we didn't know about one another. And yes, even if you've known someone for 30, 40, 50 years, there is always something that you don't know about that person, I promise you, because the amount of people that operate from a place of assumption in their relationships and their engagement with others is um, is breathtaking. And um, it's often something that we can't see that we're actually doing and bringing to the table. Just going to check in. Uh, if you've just joined the, the live, you know, please say hi. I'd love to know who's listening and uh, whether this is helpful, if this is making sense to you, you want to give me a, a little bit of feedback and I will look at what the next question is for today. If anyone's got a question about what I've just shared, um, please post it below. I'm more than happy to answer your questions for you. This is what I'm here for. And if you just want to say hi, please say hi. Love to hear from people who are tuning into to the live today. All right, let me just check on the next question. One momento. Okay. All right. Um, I had another question come through that I wanted to answer. It was actually um, a question that came through last week and I really want to answer that today because I think it's really important. Um, hey, Mick, thanks for saying hi. Tracy, yes, I know it is freezing in Melbourne. Hey, I'm glad you found the Wednesday call. Really helpful, Mick. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great call. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hope all is well with you. Um, okay. So I had another question from someone who wants to know, how can I connect with someone? I, I, so the question was, hi, Fiona. I've often been accused of being too needy in my relationships. And, um, and, I, and I can kind of get a sense of what the other person's talking about, but I don't really understand how I can connect and how I can be in a relationship without being needy. Because to me, neediness is just expressing how I feel and asking how someone feels about me and, and trying to connect from that place. So how can I show up in my relationships without being so needy? Now, I thought this was a really great question because I think this goes on a lot in our relationships and can be quite detrimental. So this is also, again, comes back to you really having a, good, a, a strong sense of self. So, you know, you've heard me say many times, your relationship with you, your relationship with life and your relationship with others are the, th are the three foundational um, baselines, I guess, for, for relationships in general. And in life, these three are going on simultaneously, right? This is what's going on. And this is the foundation, in my opinion, of well-being, of joy, happiness, groundedness, all sorts of things. And so when you, when you, when your relationship with yourself is good, when you, when you have a strong relationship with life, your relationships with others goes through the roof, right? Because here's why. When you are, 
when you have a strong relationship with yourself, you don't take things so personally. You don't take on board other people's emotional load. You stop rescuing others. You stop over-functioning so people around you um, stop under-functioning. You are, you're present. You listen. You're connected. You're curious. You, um, you have a lot more bandwidth because you're not trying to outthink your way out of a problem. You're not overanalyzing everything. You don't ruminate as much. You're calmer. You're clearer. You're honoring of yourself. You're a, you're a more sovereign being. Okay. Now, when we show up from that place, our entire energy changes and we attract very different people, interactions, etc. in our lives. It's night and day. Um, when it comes to people who don't have a great relationship with themselves, when you don't have a great relationship with yourself, you take things personally, you overthink, you ruminate, you worry about what everybody else is thinking and feeling. You're trying to, you're generally trying to please people, rescuing, overfunctioning, or you shut down and you disappear. Um, you second guess yourself. You find it hard to make decisions. Uh, you are more likely to try and control a narrative. Um, you find it harder to connect. You're not so present. I could go on and on, right? So when I say that these two things are, are night and day, they really are. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't have a great relationship with life, when life hits, you're going to take that very personally. You're going to feel really beaten down by life. You're going to feel like things don't go your way, that, um, that you know, why do I try so hard when things don't work out my way? What's the point? You're going to feel this sort of emptiness, right, because it feels like, Life just doesn't work out for you. And you know what? That is such a familiar feeling. I know that feeling. I, I had that feeling so strongly in my life for many, many, many years. I just, for a long time, my relationship with myself was terrible and my relationship with life, I felt very beaten by life. I felt like life did not go my way. It didn't matter how hard I tried, how hard I worked, what I did, what I didn't do. Things just didn't work out for me. Like that, that was truly how my relationship with life was. And of course, my life was a reflection of that. I had plenty of evidence to support it. And so, of course, those two areas weren't going so well. So, of course, my, my other relationships weren't going so well either because they are very much a reflection of how I show up to and handle those things, right? Super, super important. So everything that I teach covers these three things because when you've got these two going well, this is super easy. But if you're just working on your relationship with others and these two aren't going so well, this becomes a chore. It's arduous. It's complicated. It's hard. You get stuck. It feels like you're trawling through mud, all right? And it looks like the answer is to leave that relationship or, you know, um, meet someone else or um, take some time out or control it. or right? Like your, your options are very limited. It's either, it's either control or leave. And of course, none of those things are great for our, our levels our levels of well-being and connection. And of course, they are terrible for things like goodwill and um, and being able to communicate, connect, all of that delicious stuff, which is what we're really all looking for, right? We really are. So, you know, it's so important that these two things are something that you've 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 taken care of, right? So yes. This is super, super important. Um, now, when it comes to being really needy, I want to just come back to that. If you are showing up from a needy place, so a needy, if your neediness is an energy, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a space that you come from, and so really, and neediness is based in fear. Okay, and so when you are when you're like, oh, you know, oh, oh they haven't texted me. I, I, I've sent them a text, but I haven't heard back. Or, um, you know, are, are they? Are, are we going to catch up today or tomorrow? Or, oh, you know, maybe they're looking too too much at somebody else. Maybe right, we've got this. You know, why haven't you called me? Um, you know, I've been thinking of you today. Did you did you miss me? Are we catching up? Are we? You, you know, there's this, right? There's this there's this anxious kind of unsettled feeling. And so that impacts the other person and it does the complete opposite to what you're looking for, right? It, it kind of pushes another person away because they're like, whoa, you know, it feels like, you know, you're putting responsibility for your well-being on top of somebody else. And if you're doing that, you will absolutely be, be destroying goodwill in that relationship, right? This is why I talk about so much about the importance of you being quite sovereign. Sovereign is someone who is okay, comfortable in their own skin and, um, and, and and comfortable to make decisions that don't necessarily work for other people, but 
work for themselves. Now, some of you are going to hear that as, oh, I'm being selfish and I'm not. Um, what I mean by that is when you do things that when you live from your truth, you bring this sense of ease and, and conviction to things and that is very attractive to other people, right? So when you're needy, you bring an energy of fear. You're loaded. You have a lot of expectations. You need someone to be a certain way for you to be okay. And you you really are literally outsourcing your well-being. And it's a very disempowered place to be in relationship from. And it can feel like a heavy burden for the other person. And so if you are someone who's doing that, you need to come back to dealing with and looking at your relationship with yourself and your relationship with life. Because once those two things are solid, the neediness goes away. And you can actually show up from that neutral, calm, connected place, which people loved being around, like that's very attractive for another person. And you're not overthinking everything, right? Over analyzing everything, all of that massive mental load that gets in the way. You can actually just show up and you're lighthearted and you're playful and you, uh, you don't take things so personally. You're not so defensive, which means you're present, you're listening. And I can tell you the feeling of living in that is amazing. Most people have no comprehension of the quality of feeling that is available to them. They're so shut off from it. Their head is so full. They're so stuck. They are overthinking everything. They have no idea of how good they can feel. And when I say good, I mean full. I mean rich instead of that emptiness that so many people are operating from and that they that they put up with instead of, um, you know, it's almost like you're sniffing at the fumes of what's possible. I'm not, I don't mean positive thinking and positivity and shouting from the rooftops. I mean this rich connection to life where you feel fulfilled, 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 <laughs> fulfilled, where you feel that um, you're, you're comfortable in your own skin, where you feel moved by life, touched by life, where you're grounded, where your mind is peaceful, where you don't have to overthink everything, you're not working that hard, you're just able to show up. You don't have this heavy mental load that sucks the life out of you it sucks the life out of people it really does you it is so unnecessary to show up from life to life that way it, it is just not required so many people see that as a require a requirement and they have such a high level and a high tolerance for overthinking they don't even realize what's available so um you know if you are someone who's been maybe you've been given that feedback that you're needy or you can feel it you absolutely need to go and sort that out. That is not somebody else's job to do for you. So to the person who sent that question in, I think it's a great question and it's something that I encourage you to, to go and deal with, right, so that you're showing up from a more neutral, open space. That's a much easier place for someone else to connect with you from. You're not putting the burden of you onto them, right, which is highly dysfunctional and becomes very toxic very quickly. Um Xanthi, what a beautiful name, Xanthi. I love that. Xanthi, Xanthi Shottam. What a great name, Xanthi. Fantastic. Hi, Fiona. It's pretty nice and brizzy today. I bet it is. I bet it is. You know, as I, I have a lot of clients in Brisbane. I don't know why. Brisbane would be my second biggest client base. And often I'm on Zoom calls with them or they're in my relatable group. And I, over winter, I'll be wrapped in a, like a doona and the heater on. And they'll, they'll show up to a Zoom call in a T-shirt or a singlet top. <laughs> It's so beautiful and warm in Brisbane and we're freezing down here in good old Melbourne. Um, welcome, Xanthi. Thanks for saying hi. David, hi, David. Um, can two people who openly acknowledge they still love each other but can't be together really move on and truly invest in themselves deeply into a new relationship? Yes, 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 yes. I do this. I help people with this every single day. I have hundreds of testimonials, case studies, 100% resounding yes. And in fact, you know, I, I'm so what certain of this because I, I have been doing this for so long. You know, I really want to talk to you about, about something because you raise a great point, David. When it comes to couple counselling, okay, the biggest mistake that I see out there, and this is why I want to, I'm, I'm, want to create a program and I've, I've started mapping it out, but I'm, I just haven't had time to put it together. I want to create a program for counsellors, therapists, etc., on on how to help and work with other, other couples because there's a, a fundamental error that is made and that is 
you know, there's this myth that couples work require a couple to be in a room together or, or a session together at the same time. This is just such a myth. It is actually not necessary and it is quite detrimental. You know, I when I work with a couple, I work with them separately and I bring them together when I think they're ready. Okay. So the in terms of, I, I use the metaphor of baking a cake. So in terms of baking a cake, it's the individual work that's the cake and the couple work is the icing on the cake. So David, when you when you invest in yourself, I cannot tell you how important that is, and you actually get what you need and the overthinking falls away and all the things that were getting in the way of you connecting, all of a sudden there's this ease and flow and lightness and people are able to connect without all that emotional baggage, without the residue, without the past being in the now, without the heavy mental load, they're light, they're playful, there's goodwill, they get over things quickly, they put things down. It's a whole new relationship. Can you have a whole new relationship with another human being? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I've got a couple that I have been working with in um, Minnesota. And they had been, this is a true story, they'd been in um, counselling for five years, getting nowhere. I mean, you know, um, I, I, I say kudos to them because they, they did counselling for so long and they finally realised they were just at a point where it wasn't helping them, they were hating the counselling and they were just feeling bogged down and heavy. And so they, they, they um, you know, read my e-book, listened to a couple of my podcasts, reached out and I, and I started working with them. Now, they got further in two, three sessions with me individually than they had done in five years of counselling. Now, I don't say this to go, wow, aren't I amazing? I don't mean it like that. What I'm, but The reason I share this with you is because I teach a very simple understanding that cuts through all the mental noise, that has you put down mental load, has, you, has your mind feel lighter, freer, and when you're when that's the case, you show up differently. You create a different energy. You're more open. You're not frightened of being vulnerable. You connect. You feel you feel this sense of joy. You feel fulfilled, fulfilled and rich. Some of you are going to listen to me and say this is pie in the sky stuff. I'm telling you, it's not. It is not pie in the sky stuff. This is absolutely possible. But us humans way overcomplicate things. Uh, we way overthink things. We get bogged down in the past. We don't know how to navigate our thinking. We um, we take things personally. We shut down. Our insecurities start leading the way. Goodwill disappears, and then people just get stuck. Okay, so yes, I I, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. Take the time. If you're miserable, like why why is, why stay in a place where you're so miserable? I, like it makes no sense to me. If there's an option out there. And look, I'm not saying that you don't have to do anything with me. Go find someone that resonates with you. If I don't resonate with you, cool, you know, find someone who does. But, you know, I've had some really, really tough times in my life. I really have. And um, the one thing I've consistently done throughout my life is I've invested in myself. And even when I've had no money to do so, because I could see that what's the point, if anything, when I'm miserable and stuck? Okay, and definitely for me, the understanding that I teach, which I came across when my husband and I were in a very terrible place um, and I was in a terrible place on on many levels, um, was the, um, you know, was the turning point for me in in every possible way. And I'm so unbelievably grateful because the overthinking has gone. There's a lightness in me. I was very serious. Um, I took things personally. I was defensive. My insecurities were leading the way. I was terrible at getting over myself, very self-righteous, terrible at connecting. It was almost like there was this hard rock in my chest and everything, life was just bouncing off it. That is not the case now. And I could not be more grateful. You know, life can still be challenging, as you've all heard me say, and this is not my saying, but life is a contact sport. You know, just when you think you, you're, you've you got it all sorted out, something will come along and, and knock you over. But, you know, the beautiful thing is I keep drawing from this understanding and it just makes it easier for me to show up and be present and create the kind of connections that I want and to feel good and have well-being in the face of chaos at times. Now, to me, that's priceless. Like, that's just, to me, the most important thing in life. And, look, everybody's got different um, things that they see as, as important, okay, I get that. But, you know, if you're sitting here stuck, like, 
You don't have to live your life that way. And so many of you are. And this is why I'm so passionate about this. Um, I, I, I cannot tell you this matters to me because I really want to reduce the amount of suffering in the world. And I know that when we change our relationship in these three areas that I talk about, you shift and then you create these beautiful ripple effects that go everywhere to your friends, to your kids, to your extended family, to everywhere. And as you create ripple effects, that affects them and they create ripple effects. Like it's amazing what one person can do. But you've got to get over your fear, your overthinking, the will it work for me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And the beautiful thing about this understanding is the only prerequisite you need is to be a human being. That's it, because this is about what it is essentially to be human. And we're all human and we're far, and there's a synergy between all of us, right? Human beings are far more the same than they are different. Most things are all about analyzing your differences, which to me makes no sense, right? We've got to see our sameness. When we look in the direction of sameness, we're calm. We take a deep breath. We put down mental load. We stop working. We stop doing the whole how, 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 why, 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 which is what keeps people stuck in mental load, how and why, right? You stop doing that because it's completely unnecessary. And so this huge mental load falls away. Now there is more of you on offer to connect. And not only that, it just feels amazing. When I think about the quality of the feeling I now get to live in compared to where I was, it's no comparison. None. I None. And to me, that is the most important thing because as some of you have heard me say before, the quality of the feeling you live in is ultimately all there is for you. Does that make sense? That's what, what it is. You can have the most perfect home. You can have the most perfect body. You can have the best car, the best career, the best whatever. But the feeling you're in determines your experience of those things. Those things don't determine your experience of this. It's the complete other way. This is something people do not understand. So if you feel empty and hollow and stuck, those things will do nothing for you. Nothing. And so then you keep searching. Maybe I need more of that. Maybe I need to do more of this. You're looking in the wrong place. Okay. So yes, Please, please, please. You know, when I was stuck all those years ago, I got terribly impacted by the GFC and I and I remember sitting at my kitchen bench in complete and utter despair. It's one of the lowest points of my life, complete and utter despair. My daughter was in a cot. I had four kids. I had, I, Anyway, I won't bore you with my life story, but I had some pretty challenging things going on in my life. And there, I'll never forget this moment because I believe moments like this show up in our lives and, you know, you've got to recognise the moments and seize that moment, right? Everybody has these moments. I'm sitting at my at my kitchen bench in utter despair thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to keep functioning. I don't know how to, how to make sure there's enough food on the table. I was absolutely bottom, bottom out. And I don't even know where this came from. There was, I looked over and there was a magazine on my kitchen bench and came from because I didn't even have money to buy magazines at that point. I think it was a Time magazine and it had Warren Buffett on the front cover. And I looked at it and um, and the journalist was saying, you know, interview with Warren Buffett and, uh, you know, splashed across, something along, the, along those lines was on the, on the front page and it said, you know, I asked Warren Buffett, you know, or Warren Buffett says, you know, reveals what to do if you've, if you've lost everything or you have to start over, you know. What you know, that was something along those lines, and I went, I'd really like to know what Warren Buffett has to say about someone who's either lost everything or has to start over. I'd really like to know what that is. And so, I opened this magazine, I still don't even know where it came from, it's just bizarre that it was even there. And I go to this article, and for those of you who don't know Warren Buffett, Google him, he's a, a very famous. Um, um, investor of shares and things he's you know and and he still lives quite a, a humble life from what I gather doesn't have lots of flashy things um, not that that's the be all and end all but you know he's quite a I, I, I gather a very fairly fairly um, you know humble man and and uh, that has been extraordinarily successful like to to the tune of millions and millions of dollars billions of dollars so um, I I, I, I look at this article and, and the journalist said, so, you know, Warren, you know, what would you say to someone who's either lost everything or starting over? And he said, I have four words, invest in your head. 
Those were his exact words. I'll never forget that moment. It's emblazoned in my brain. And I remember sitting there thinking, okay, I can do that. I don't have the money, but I will do that. I'm going to invest in my head. I'm going to invest in me. I've invested in a lot of other things, you know, hence why the GFC, I'd invested in blue chip shares that just disappeared overnight. I'd invested in other things, but I sat there and I had this realisation. I went, you know what, I actually haven't invested in me. Time for me to invest in me. And so I did. And I didn't have the money. I didn't. I'm not making this up. I didn't, but I found it because I went, this is, this is too important, right? I don't want to show up this way to my kids. I don't want to show up this way to life. I don't want to be this miserable. I don't want to be this stuck. I have to find a way forward. Now, every single one of you has had moments like that, right? Every single one of you. And, you know, I was flat broke when I, was, when I, when I had this realisation. And I went, I just have to find a way. And so I did. I started investing in myself. And because my mind was open, because I was looking, I came across this. And as soon as I did, for the first time in my life, I felt like uh, in a long time, I should say, not my life, in a long time, I felt like I could breathe. I took this massive breath. I felt this sense of relief. I felt my mental load lighten immediately. And I, and I had this sense of knowing that whatever I just found, whatever I'd been looking for in my life, I just found it. I'd never had that feeling before. And so from there, I devoted my life to becoming an expert in that, being able to teach it and share it with others because I knew I had found something that had the potential to help everybody. And there are very few things in life that have that potential because there are very few things in life that are true, right? Now, when you look at something that's true, that's that's founded in truth, it has a very big impact on people. So to give you an example of what I mean by something founded in truth, all right, think about the principles of flight. The principles of flight are founded in truth. So the principles of flight are if you want to fly an aeroplane well, you have to meet these three principles, the principles of lift, thrust, and gravity. So in order to fly a plane well, a plane has to meet these three principles, hence why the design of planes is the same. And I believe this is something the Wright brothers discovered. Until they discovered it, they were just throwing anything and everything they could at planes. You know, two motors here, three wings this side, two this side, two tails. You know, they were just throwing things at something and hoping it would stick. Once they discovered these principles, everything, as long as everything matched those principles, they knew it had a very high chance of being successful or it would be successful, 100% chance of being successful as long as it meant they met these principles. Now, when pilots are learning how to fly a plane, it's not just knowing how to operate the, uh, the, um, the instruments of a plane. They need to understand these principles, right? Because understanding these principles is what makes them fantastic pilots. It's not learning the gadgets that makes them a fantastic pilot, right? That's an aspect of this. And so what I'm teaching is exactly the same. These are principles founded in truth because they're true for everybody. And once you have them, you keep coming back to them. You draw from them and you, then you go out to meet wherever, whatever's going on for you in life. But when you come back to that, when you have a baseline to come back to, you stop all the bouncing that people do. I see people bouncing everywhere. I'm like, what about this? But I could do this. But how about this? But if I don't do that, this might happen. Oh, but I was thinking of doing that. But if I do that, this would happen. And do, 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 do. bounce, 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 bounce. And so they just get stuck and overwhelmed and they find life hard. And then they just want to shut down, right? And they disappear. They go inside themselves and their world shrinks. And it's just a very painful place to live your life. You know, this is when you have these principles, you just, you, you, you don't do the bouncing because there's this clarity. You don't need to overthink. You can put all that mental load down. And then guess what? You feel good. You feel lighter. You feel present, grounded. These are the things that we all want. We all want to be in a good feeling. We all want to have peace of mind. This is just true for every human being on the planet. This is just what people want. They think they're going to find it out here somewhere, right? But truly, if you don't know where to look for the answer, then you're going to bounce and then you're going to get really stuck and you just don't have to live your life like that, okay? Um, 
Okay, sorry guys, I've just, I've just, I've gone on a bit of a rant today, haven't I? Um, oh well, we're at 44 minutes, all right, I need to stop talking. Okay, um, I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Um, hey Miriam, um, thanks for saying hi from Hamilton in New Zealand. Love, love chatting to our New Zealanders over the pond. Um, Michelle, George, if you know you're being needy, how do you stop if it's in the moment? Um, if you know you're being needy, if, well, that's the thing. It's a matter of how deeply you know you're being needy in a moment. If you know that you're being needy, you will stop automatically, right? So human beings operate well via realisation, right? As soon as we have a realisation, we automatically shift, automatically. We don't need a system to teach us how to stop doing something. The realisation of it is enough. We've, we're amazing like that. So I'm going to say that you don't, you're not realise, realising that enough in a moment because if you did, you would stop. Because you could see that it's not, it's not, it's not working for you or the person you're with. So again, this is going to come back to how deeply you know you. Because when you're when you deeply know yourself, you'll know when you're doing that, and you'll be able to choose something else. Um, hey, Sharon, um, lots of catching up. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. You've been away at the Gold Coast. How beautiful! What a gorgeous place the Gold Coast is. Um, haven't been there for a long time. Rose, my work with Fiona really had a positive impact on my 20-year marriage. That was in a bad place. Today we are so playful and more connected than we have been in years. Oh, thank you, Rose. I so appreciate you sharing that, honey. And, yeah, you know, this is – Rose is – and there's lots of examples of this. Rose Rose and her husband are a great example of what you are asking about, David, if you're still there, right? Can we um, invest in ourselves and create a new relationship? 100% yes. Um, hi, Darlene from Calgary. Great. Wow. Hi. So lovely to hear from you. Um, thank you so much for joining the live. I really appreciate it. Okay, everyone. I know I've gone on for a very, very long time today. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I will see you next um, fr uh, next Friday at, you know, approximately 12.30. If any of you want to have a chat to me about the work that I do or my Relatable program, which, or you know, um, many of my students do, then um, I will put a link to where you can book a time to have a chat with me about that. All right, everyone, I really wish you a fantastic weekend and um, happy relating. Okay, take care now. Bye.